Hey, good morning, everybody. Well, it turns out that the uh, uh, the last uh, uh, week review that I did did not have any sound, and and while it, and while it's green, not nearly as valuable as somebody kind of telling you what the heck that cursor is doing. So let's have at it. A uh, couple things. Let's go right to week six. Um, from this point forward, I'm probably going to start having these weekly. Uh, kind of keep you guys connected. You'll notice when you log in that there, it might look a little bit different. I went through and, and, uh, and changed some of these. Um, uh, the content did not change, the deliverables did not change, but in some cases I just changed the, the headlines so that they kind of coincided with uh, the various projects. So we're gonna, uh, you know, this week six overview when you come in here will actually be this one that hopefully you can hear my voice. So a couple things I need you to do. First of all, I need you to go back to week five um, because, uh, and I'm not sure why, but um, Blackboard did not populate the discussion five uh, Blackboard. And so, um, uh, uh, so I need you to go back. Go back to week five, do the discussion board five if you didn't already do it. A whole bunch of you did it, but if you didn't do it, go back and do it. Don't worry about that due date. I wanna make sure that everybody gets it in. Um, this is, I'm not even sure why um, Blackboard did that, but it just did. So let's take a look at what we're supposed to do this week, right? So we get a little bit of reading. I mean, I think there's, I don't know what, 10 pages of reading. This is probably the least amount of reading that you'll do in any marketing class. <clears throat> and that's because this is really focused on, let's go do some research and let's figure out a lot more uh, by doing than by reading, right? I'm a big fan of saying that you don't learn to hit a baseball by reading a book. Uh, you learn to hit a baseball by swinging the bat. And so uh, what I wanna do is make sure that you guys are swinging the bat. And the only way that an entrepreneur can be successful is to have absolute clarity on their customer. And so that's why we're spending so much time on research. I mean, I, I, do, this, I do this every day. Every day, we, uh, on, the, on my business side of my life, uh, we do this sort of stuff. So. Um, so there's a couple things, right? And when you're going to watch this video, hopefully, uh, you will uh, read this chapter, the discussion board. And here's what I want you to do with this this assignment, right? Describe one of your potential customers as if you were describing someone you had just met to a friend. And I want you to kind of have that sort of that intimate sort of, you know, discussion. I don't want it to be, a, you know, generic. They were, you know, they they make this much money. I want it to be more personal and. It's super important that you um, think about it in those terms, and um, you know because the, the more you understand your customer on a personal level, not individually, but kind of understand what's going on with them and who are they, the better chance you're going to have of, of actually being able to serve them. Okay. Uh, second couple days, uh, research project two is due, and I just want you to create a profile. So let's take a look. There's a couple of videos. I know they're pretty good videos, or else I wouldn't put them up there. But this is what I'm talking about by create a profile. Something as simple as this. And what this means is that you've done the, the due diligence and said, okay, uh, uh, you know, based on the product that I want to deliver, um, you know, this is this is what I think my my customer would look like. And so I just created this product, hypothetical. I know it already exists, but it just sounds cool, right? We're gonna create a backpack that has a solar panel built into it. The whole, the whole backpack is a solar panel, the back of it at least. Uh, and it has a couple USB cords that are fed from the, uh, the backpack so that uh, you can plug in your iPads or iPods or your tablets, whatever you wanna do. And um, so that you can either run them uh, or you can charge them. And uh, so simple product, right? So we wanna think about who is the customer that's gonna buy this thing. And, um, and that's where kind of doing some research is really, really helpful. And it's just, and it's kind of like, okay, we, we know that this is gonna be a person, uh, you know, that is probably, uh, you know, between the ages of, uh, you know, let's see, they're in high school. So they're gonna be, you know, 14 to 18, okay? Uh, you know, they're gonna be predominantly male, okay? Uh, their income is going to be minimal, right? If they're in high school, um, spelling, you know, if they're a high school student, um, uh, you know, they're going to make six grand a year, so they're not going to make a ton of money. You know, maybe they've got a part-time job. 
uh, you know, the race, you know, that, that will play a significant role uh, in some of, these, some of these decisions. And so we know that there are certain races that adopt technology uh, more than others, but maybe that won't matter, right? You're gonna say open, you know, it won't matter. At the high school level, it just won't make a difference. You know, race generation, you know, this will absolutely apply to certain businesses. Um, and, and so it does apply to uh, one of them that I'm, uh, uh, my company, Crescendo. Uh, and the, the reason it does is that we are targeting first generation Latinos. And that is our primary market, not the second generation, third generation, fourth generation, but the first generation. Uh, just because there's certain attributes and behaviors and understandings that are associated with that generation and therefore they absolutely apply. Well, they apply to you in this particular case, not really, it's not really applicable. Um, and where are they located geographically? You know, is this going to be a product that would be, you know, uh, primarily offered to the urban market or do we think that this would be open and adopted as well? And so that's really up to you to figure out. You know, then we take a look at that second group, and we're going to call these guys, you know, the 18 to 24s. Uh, once again, it's going to be, you know, in this particular case, predominantly male. You know, maybe they're making a little bit more money a year. You know, they're working part-time. Uh, you know, they're a college student. Um, uh, and so, uh, you know, race, you know, in this particular case, would is race going to be open, or do you think that there would be... Um, you know, uh, would uh, Latinos or Asians or African Americans, or, or do you think this is open, right? You know, I think that if we look at it, I think that I would say there would probably be uh, college students that were Asian might be more inclined, okay? Uh, generation, I think it'd be first generation, uh, or I think that would might be open actually. I don't think that that would, that would apply in this particular case. Uh, ge geography, and I think that might be open as well. I think you're on a college campus, you're carrying books, uh, you're carrying equipment, and uh, uh, and that's it. You're off to the races. So the third in this particular case might be those people that are 24 to 32. Uh, once again, male. Uh, now they're making, you know, uh, 80,000 a year. Uh, you know, they're called grad, college graduates. So these are guys that are working uh, in the uh, in the technology arena. Uh, you know, race, I think it would be uh, Asian, white, uh, would be the predominant buyer's generation. I think that's going to be open. Uh, geography, I think it's going to be city. And so uh, the reason why I think that is I think this would be, you know, uh, a product that would be used by technology guys, uh, people in finance, you know, uh, young people with their first gig. And so the, the reason why this is so important is that when we start thinking about how do we reach these people? We're going to be reaching them in very different ways. And so, for example, here we might be using a combination of direct mail and social media, right? Here it's going to be exclusively social media. Here we might do a, a combination of social media and maybe on-campus promotion. And so, I mean, I don't know yet. I'm just guessing. But at the end of the day, this is one of those, this is one of those cases where the, better, the more you understand the different customers uh, in your segment. And so you never want to say, my customer is 14 to 32. Because the reality is, is that as I just showed here, these three different markets all have different incomes, different education levels. In some cases, they're you know located um, uh, uh, in different geographical or they have different race um, expectations and you know, or different uh, profiles. And so you may have these, or you may, you may have 10 that more uh, clearly defined uh, who your customer is. And, um, you know, and you know, in the particular case of somebody that's got a carpet cleaning business, for example, uh, you know, if it's gonna be focused on commercial, uh, you know, then, you know, then the customer here is going to be, you know, customer one, uh, you, you probably want job title, right? And you know, what job do they have? And, you know, and then it might be uh, facility size, might be one of those considerations. So if you've got a, an office building that's 1,200 square feet, okay, that's the, you know, facility sizes, then the job title of this person, uh, the person that makes the decision, you know, might be the office manager, okay? Uh, but if you've got a facility, for example, uh, that is 10,000 square feet of office space, 
you know that it might be a facility manager. Okay, uh, or if you've got a you're talking about a large commercial building and now there's 120,000 square feet, you know you might be dealing with a property manager. And and the reality is is that you're going to be reaching these people. Uh, these man, if I could learn how to spell, I might actually be able to. Uh, come on, come on, you could do this. Okay. Honestly, this is one of the big reasons why I uh, I tell you guys don't worry about uh, spelling. Uh, it's because I can't spell. Um, actually, I just type too fast. If I slowed down, it might be better. <clears throat> but the reality is, is that you're going to be reaching the office manager in a different way. You might just you know be cold calling these people or walking in and giving them a bid if you're in the neighborhood, right? Facility manager, you're going to be engaging them a totally different way. These people are going to be swamped. Property manager, once again, it might be a cold call with a visit. And uh, whereas you might be able to walk in and give the office manager a proposal, this person you're going to need to schedule a meeting. So it's going to be a, you know, the, the way that you reach them will be very, very different. So that's kind of an example of how you want to do your, uh, you know, your customer uh, research. Next, we start... Uh, the next project we're going to be starting uh, really is now understanding your market. And, and this is a big deal. So once we understand who our customer is, right? So my customer is a 24-year-old male that works in the Silicon Valley. He makes more than 80 grand a year and he's Asian or white, okay? Um, uh, that's awesome. Now, how many of them are there? And so, you know, what we want to do then is begin to really dig into... Uh, understanding from a demographic standpoint, you know, uh, where are these people that are Asian and white and, and are technology inclined uh, located and how many of them are there? And so that we can begin to define the size of our market. So if it turns out that there's, you know, a million people that fit that profile and they're, they're in these 30 geographical areas, that's fabulous. Um, but we got to know, <clears throat> you know, once again, go back to the carpet cleaning, you know, we might be looking at a county. Um, or we might be looking at a cluster of cities and we might be looking at one city. So within one city, how many facilities are there that uh, are greater than 10,000 square feet, but less than 120,000 square feet? It just comes down to, you know, you aligning that market with, with these customers. So, uh, you know, the next step really will be, you know, you understand the customer one, you know, there's this many of them and they're located here geographically. So that's the next assignment that's coming up. You'll see that next week. Um, this one's due in a couple of days. Don't worry about the, the 27th because this was late and, uh, or it wasn't late. It was just, you know, it didn't work out. So um, if we go, if it, you just couldn't hear it. So next, take a look. You know, we go to, uh, go back to course information. Let's take a look at next week. You know, next week, we once again, we're really digging into uh, your market. And so there's a lot of, you know, conducting market research. Uh, how do you use census.gov? And census.gov, I mean, there's a whole bunch of these things. Um, but census.gov uh, gives you amazing data, like on population, right? World population right now, 7.275 million people. The US, we're 321 million. Um, you know, you get some quick facts on uh, California. Uh, this is the place you go, right? So population 38,000, you know, a few years ago, it was 30, 37 and change. Uh, let's see how many people are under 18. 23% uh, of the population is under 18. That tells us a lot, right? How many females are there? 50.3% more women than men. Hey, uh, good for guys. Uh, white alone, right? You know, 72, 73% that are just white. Native Hawaiian breaks it down, you know, living in the same house one year, uh, foreign born persons. So this is a, you know, this is, this is definitely uh, a, a big data point. Uh, language other than English spoken in the home, 43%. That's huge. So those are great things, right? You know, college graduate, uh, bachelor's degree or higher. So this can help you begin to kind of narrow in on you know, we got 1.8 million vets um, in, in California. You know, how long do they travel to work? The average person in California spends 27 minutes. <clears throat> so there's a lot of amazing data in here. You can download them and sort them. There's all kinds of really cool stuff. But these, these videos kind of show you how to work with some of this stuff. Um, 
So there's there's some great stuff. Some of these are really long, some of them aren't. So um, if you finish your customer uh, profile, you wanna jump into the market research, take a look at, at uh, week seven, and, and go ahead and get that started, right? So that's due, you've got a couple weeks for that, that's not due for a couple more weeks, um, because I'm really looking for something powerful. So start doing the research now and collecting the data, and then you know I'll, I'll next week what I'll do is I'll post what I'd like it to look like, but it really should probably look something like this, because I wanna keep it simple but clear. And this is fairly clear, except for the fact that it, maybe I should censor it so that it doesn't look like it's all, yeah, that's better. You know, you, you know, this is pretty clear, right? My customer one manages a facility size of 1200 and, and, it's, a, and it's an office manager. It's it probably gonna be female, right? So if I look at gender in this particular case, it's gonna be female, male, female. Why is that important? Because my marketing pieces are gonna have to hit these people in different ways. So the next thing might look like, you know, the, you know, this may look like, okay, customer one, you know, where are they geographically, right? They're in, you know, Northern California, the whole United States, how many of them are there? And we'll, we'll break it out. And so that we can, you know, really begin to get a snapshot or a picture of what the size of our market is. Because all of this data then will flow into our marketing plan and into the presentation. So the marketing plan is just gonna be a PowerPoint, right? So you're gonna prepare it, there'll be some written stuff very little because I want to, I love bullet points and I love at a glance, but you need to have the data behind it in case there's questions. So um, that is week six. Cannot believe we're already a third of the way through. If you got questions, email me. I've already got some questions from students and I love that. If you're on campus, come see me. I'm in uh, room 454N. So I'm in the 400 building, which is one of the new buildings. Uh, so, you know, one of the, the buildings that faces Hesperian. I'm upstairs on the right-hand side. I've got a great office. Come by, have a cup of coffee, uh, and I can answer any questions you might have. Also, don't hesitate to call me or send me a text. Um, you know, I, I tend to be fairly responsive. I got these emails last night at 4.30, and uh, I was already out, so I responded first thing this morning. So, um, hope you guys are doing well. Call with questions. Uh, if you get stuck somewhere, if you're not sure what to do, um, you know, I'm here to help you guys. Peace. Have a good weekend.